Hey, I'm jumping on just a couple of minutes early to give people a chance to find us. They said they're not getting notifications, so it's five minutes early. Uh, so I'm going to just let this sit for about five minutes, give people a chance to, uh, to find it and get their notifications. Apparently, with the last update, you're going to have to reset your notifications. But anyway, uh, be on in just about five minutes. While you're jumping on, make sure you hit the share button. Hey, Jana, uh, hit the share button and get ready to go. I'm going to step over just for a minute. Uh, this is Washington Lake behind me. Uh, I'm in a little, uh, uh, just a little picnic area, as you can see. It's a beautiful little picnic area here. Uh, anyway, I will be back in about four minutes. Uh, people have been having a hard time. Their notifications aren't coming up. And so we'll give everybody a chance to ramp on and we will get busy. All right, being victorious in just about uh, about four minutes. All right, be right back. All right. Again, I'm jumping on just a couple of minutes. This is more of a public area, so we may have some people passing by, and they get to, they get, to get in on it. All right. But, uh, again, this is the beautiful Washington Lake behind us. It's beautiful, very peaceful here, and uh, we're getting ready to speak the Word of God. So, Happy Thursday to you guys that are jumping on early, early. Amen. Yeah, I had several contact me yesterday and saying they're not getting notifications and stuff like that. So, uh, as you see, we only have about four on right now uh, because they're not expecting me to be early. I'm normally two or three minutes late. <laughs> uh, praise God. Amen. So uh, make sure we chat it up as people jump on at 9. Some of you guys that are here early, make sure we're chatting things up and just encouraging one another. There's just tons of fearful and discouraging news right now. And so we, continue, we need to, to continue to assemble, uh, whether it's assembling physically in church or assembling uh, down at Hardee's to talk. We need to continue to assemble uh, and even assembling here on Jumpstart Nation. That's the one thing we can't afford to, uh, to stop doing is stop assembling. And so even uh, the JSM, where we're gathering and speaking the Word of God, we, uh, we need to do that. People, people that are not trusting the Lord right now are very, very stressed. I'm looking at uh, even some uh, here in our area, they're, they're, they're exhausted. They're mentally and emotionally exhausted and uh, I can understand now while a uh, you know a year ago we're just giving everybody a chance to jump on we started we started early we're not going to start until nine but I can understand now why a year ago when this COVID hit the spirit of God the spirit of the Lord thank God dropped into me these words watch your mouth mind your mouth that's what he said to me when all this stuff began coming and, and, and we didn't know whether we were all going to die, you know, we didn't know what was going on, 15 days to stop the spread, all of that garbage um, and all of that propaganda, um, the Lord told me, mind your mouth, watch your mouth. And so that's what we've been doing, okay? I'm just fulfilling to the best of my ability with all of my heart minding my mouth. And then he said to me, I don't know if it was the same day, I forget now, a couple of days later, the revelation came, get on Facebook and help others mind their mouth. Help others, encourage, encourage others to speak in line with the word only, okay? And so the rest is history. So we're just doing what Jesus said to do. And what I'm finding out is if people are talking fear, talking the, constantly talking about the news or talking about things, talking about it and about it, about it, about it, about it, about it, about it. They're the ones that are becoming discouraged, despondent, fearful, depressed. We can't let this stuff get into our mouth. And uh, so, amen. 
I love it when Rhea gets on here because it's just so much fun. We have so much fun laughing, and it's such a refreshment for us. And um, praise God. You know what? When it's all said and done, we're going to heaven. <laughs> Amen. All right, it's 9 o'clock, so welcome, everybody. Welcome to Jumpstart Nation, jumpstarting your day speaking the Word of God. So glad you're jumping on. Please share. Please share. Good. We got a notification, so me getting on five minutes early may have helped jumpstart that. I don't know. Amen. Did the rest of you get a notification, or are you having to go back and reset your notifications? I don't know. Talk to me for a minute. Did you guys get a notification? Because I jumped on five minutes early to give it a chance to show up. Um, but anyway... Sister, my sister from Texas, Jana, man, she was on here at five till. As soon as I hit the go button, she's on, man. She's ready to go. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jana, you're going to have to move to Oklahoma to the sooner state. Sooner first. <laughs> I didn't mean to insult you. You stay in Texas. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Okay, Joel. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. So you did get a notification. Good deal. Amen. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Had to resubscribe. Okay, who said that? Who said it? Come back here. Lindsay. Okay, you had to resubscribe. Yeah. Yeah, I think they planned that. I don't know if the bots and the, the um, um, all of the stuff they do because sometimes I'll mention governmental things. I don't know. Uh, I will encourage you to do this. And I'm not saying this out of fear because I don't have a spirit of fear and you don't either. But I know they interviewed Ashton Kutcher a couple of weeks ago, and he says he's refusing to allow his children to have their phones, their iPads, their computers. The only place they can use them is in one room, in the living room. And then when they're done using them, they turn them off um, because he doesn't want anyone listening in. And what we've noticed yesterday, I was talking to Cynthia and Addison and uh, he said that uh, he was playing a video game with his friends. And there, in the particular video game, there was a, a military ambulance. And he was telling the guys in this group deal online video game, go to the ambulance, run, hide behind the ambulance. Hide, it was a military game. Get to the ambulance. Well, it wasn't long after that that he got an advertisement to his phone offering a deal to buy a military-grade, commercial-grade uh, ambulance. <laughs> so... So I would encourage you, not that we need to be afraid. And like Addison said, hey, we're already, they've already got biometrics on us. But anyway, just be wise. Just be wise. I, th I think it, it's no big deal. Uh, we are here. Nothing big is going to break loose until the rapture happens anyway. But any, anyway, praise God. Uh, use some wisdom. Use some wisdom. It's none of their business. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, uh, Luke chapter 5 so hello, everybody. Good morning, good morning. I bless you guys. Bless you guys. Bless y'all. Amen. Um, thank you. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. I agree with you, Eileen. I agree. Amen. The enemy is defeated. We are victorious. We are victorious. And we keep victory in our mouth. Man, we're blessed. Hello, Sister Johnson. Good to see you. Bless you, and I bless the great state of Arkansas. Amen. Uh, Cliftina, we'll get on later. Um, uh, she shared with me. In fact, I called her. Uh, she went to church here a long time ago, and then uh, here in Maysville, her family, her blessed, beautiful family, her mom and dad have already gone home to be with the Lord. Sw such a sweet family. Anyway, she left here and moved to Arkansas, or uh, Arizona. And so Cliftina uh, said that uh, they were speaking the word of life over a person who was really in a bad condition in the hospital, not sure if she's going to make it or not. And she not only is making it, she's now asking for food. She's been revived, and she's coming out of a near-death experience. And Cliftina is just praising God. It's just amazing what's happening. So another miracle. Hey, Teresa, good to see you. Another miracle, 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 miracles. Miracles are happening in your body. Praise God. Uh, the name of Jesus is above every name. Hey, Megan. Hey, Kelly Sue. Hey, Jimmy. Good to see you, bro. Hey, Jennifer. Good to see y'all. Now, if I miss your name, it's because I got a dinky little phone, and don't, don't feel bad. I, I love you. Amen. So just hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Please take a moment of silence 
and share. Share. Let's get the shares up. Let's get this word out. Okay, here we go. Talk to it, not about it. Talk to it, not about it. Many times, and that includes praying about it. Many times we're asking people to pray for things that prayer is not the proper answer. It's speaking to it. All right? And so uh, this is number 23. As you walk through the Gospels and read through the four Gospels, Jesus did not pray for one sick person. He didn't. He didn't pray for God to heal them. He did not pray for one sick person. He did not pray for one demon-possessed person, person with mental, emotional disease or disorders. We, 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 we put labels on them, but very often it's, it's demonic, okay? He didn't pray for any of those. If you walk through the Gospels, that was a powerful revelation to me. The Lord said, go through the Gospels, and you'll see that I did not pray to God for the sick. I did not pray to God for the demon-possessed. He said, I ministered directly to them. I spoke to them. I spoke to the sickness. I spoke to the demon. And, um, and that, that also is true uh, concerning the uh, Acts of the Apostles. That's also true concerning the Acts of the Apostles. And so in Ecclesiastes, some of you are taking notes, and uh, you've asked me to make sure I, uh, I clearly give the reference. In Ecclesiastes 8, 4, where the word of a king is, there's power. And we've seen from several scriptures last week that we are kings and priests unto our God. We are kings. We reign in life. So when we're speaking the word of God, when we're speaking in line with the word and speaking in the name of Jesus, then uh, that's power. We're producing power. Now, here's an example of this. And, and so we don't want to pray about things that we're supposed to be directly speaking to them, ministering the anointing to. See, I, I don't... I. When this revelation came about three years ago, I stopped praying for the sick. I stopped asking God. I stopped sending prayers up, and I began listening through prayer. Lord, how do you want me to minister to, the, to this person? My praying was getting directions, not giving, give, not giving directions, but getting directions. I think a lot of times in our praying, we're giving God directions when really... Prayer should be you getting directions so you know how to release your authority. You know how to release the anointing. You're getting guidance on how to do that, okay? So, for now, for several years now, thir three or so years, I, it's a number, I don't pray for the sick. I say, Lord, how do you want me to minister to them? Do you want me to speak the word only? Do you want me to lay hands and impart the anointing only? Do you want me to do a combination? Do you want me to give them a direction, something, an, something to act on? Bend over, touch your toes, go wash your face in the pool of Siloam. So we're listening to how to activate the anointing. Okay, it's horizontal. Faith is horizontal. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He didn't ask God. He didn't pray and ask God to kill the fig tree. He spoke to it. So we need to start speaking to things rather than talking to God about them we should be getting direction and speaking the word to them. So talk to it, not about it. Now, here is, where the, here is a proof that where you as a king in Christ speak the word of God, it literally produces the manifestation of power. Here is Luke chapter 5. I want you to see this. We covered this, but the Lord said cover it again. Luke chapter 5. Verse 17 says, one day as he was teaching, as Jesus was teaching. How do you teach? You're speaking words. As he was teaching, there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to to heal them. Why was the power of the Lord in manifestation? Because he was teaching. He was speaking the word. He was talking about the power, talking about the anointing. He was talking to them, not talking to God. He was teaching. And when he was teaching, because he's a king, power was manifested. The minute she la borose, the matotasa, Jesus. Oh, it came out of me deep. The minute you start speaking 
the Word of God. The minute you start speaking the Word of God, there is power. There is a manifestation of power. Power manifests the minute you speak. If you're speaking about you're healed by the stripes of Jesus, power is present. When you talk about I'm blessed, I'm prosperous, I'm wealthy in Christ, He became poor, made me rich, the power to prosper is manifested. All right, so as he was, says, as he was teaching, Luke 5, 17, the power to perform healing was present. Why? Because he was speaking. Where the word of a king is, there's power. Now, the same story is in Mark chapter 2. The same story is in Mark chapter 2. And I want you to hear, it doesn't say he was teaching. It says, uh, and when he came back to Capernaum several days after, it, afterward, it was heard that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no longer room, not even near the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Instead of saying he was teaching, he was speaking the word to them. Wow. And the power of the Lord was present. Jesus knew how to manifest power by speaking to, speaking to it. Speak to your body. Say to your body, body, you're healed by the stripes of Jesus. Say to your environment, I'm protected. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't lack protection. The minute you do, it manifests the power of protection. Amen. Uh, in the past two days, this, what is this? Third, oh, past three days, I've had two people pull out in front of me where it could have been a T-bone. Uh, one lady, uh, three days ago, just pulled right out in front of me. It was a 45-mile zone, but the Lord had made me very aware I saw her just pull out real slow right in front of me. I would have slammed right into the back of her, but because the Lord had me very aware it all happened in slow motion, I just slowed down my, my vehicle, and um, I was not angry at all, but I laid on my horn to make that person aware of how she had endangered her own life as well as mine. Now, she may have thought I had road rage. I did not have it. I didn't have it. I was just thankful God showed me. But she could have taken my life and her life. And then just now, driving here to this park, a person pulled out from behind a vehicle. They were parked. I was coming toward them. They pulled out from behind a vehicle. I could have T-boned them, but I was very aware. They hit their brakes. I, was, I waved at them, smiled, and they apologized by waving back. But my point is, I've been confessing, the Lord is my shepherd. I do not lack protection because a shepherd protects his sheep. Say that out loud. Say it out loud. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't lack protection. I don't lack provision. I don't lack direction. Think about the shepherd. He protects, he provides, and he directs. And he's going to direct you into green pastures. So that's a tremendous thing. If you want power to manifest... Uh, it's a tremendous thing to say the Lord is my shepherd. I don't lack direction because he's my shepherd leading me. I don't lack protection. He protects me from the wolves, including political wolves. And I don't lack direction. He leads me. And that's a powerful thing to say. And you're manifesting that power. So Jesus was speaking the word to them and the power was manifested to heal. See, when we're speaking the word Jumpstart Nation, we're literally bringing supernatural power into manifestation. I had a person say to me a couple of weeks ago, uh, when you walked by me, this is what the person said, when you walked by me, this person said, the Lord made me very aware of the weight of the anointing that was on you. When you passed by me, I felt the weight of the anointing, the weight of the glory that was on you, Pastor. I didn't feel it. I was just walking somewhere. Here's the point. You carry that same weighty glory. You and the guy sensing it carries that same weight of glory. We are weighty. We are weighted down with the glory of God. We are heavyweight in the realm of the Spirit. You are a heavyweight champion. Oh, man, I'm telling you what, you are, you are not to be fooled with. The devil doesn't want to fool with you, but he will try to get you to use your own mouth to not speak. He'll tell you to your mind, yeah, your words don't make much difference. You know, you tried that faith thing. You tried that speaking. It didn't work. Yeah, it worked. You probably just weren't patient. It worked. 
So you're a heavyweight. Say it out loud. The, the weight of God's glory is upon me. I am weighty. I'm a heavyweight in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. The power of the Lord is present to heal. Now, so here we are in the book of Acts. We've looked at a lot of Jesus' ministry where he spoke two things, not about things. And then here in the book of Acts, notice, notice this. Um, this is Paul. He is traveling. And it says, And it, hap it, it happened that as they were going to the place of prayer, a slave girl having a spirit of divination, a um, fortune-telling spirit, a spirit of divination. And some of you, if you're going to fortune-tellers, you need to quit dancing with the devil. You've got the Holy Spirit that will show you things to come. Don't be going to some fortune teller and hearing tarot cards. That's of the devil. Don't get tangled up in all that demonic nonsense. Horoscopes. Don't, don't do that. That's demonic. Don't be going to get in your horoscope read. Don't, don't dabble in that stuff. Don't be going to some sorcerer or some fortune teller. You don't need that. You don't need a palm reader. Look at Jesus' palms. That foretells your future. By his stripes you were healed. The, the nails in his hands declares that your hands are blessed. Amen. The crown of thorns on his head. Read, the, read, the, read, the, read his forehead. <laughs> You're blessed. Amen. Anyway, it said that uh, uh, the, the girl had a spirit of divination. She met us who was bringing her masters much profit by fortune telling. Following after Paul and us, she kept crying out and saying, These men are bondservants of the Most High God who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. Now, there's nothing wrong in what she's saying. See, the devil will say the truth. He'll, he'll talk the truth, but eventually he'll tell a lie. He, he says some truths to get you to believe that spirit. What they're saying is true, but what Paul doesn't want, he doesn't want a demon-possessed girl advertising his ministry. He doesn't want that. And so she continued doing this for many days, but Paul greatly annoyed and turned and said to the Spirit, he became greatly annoyed. Let me tell you, there is a Holy Ghost annoying. There's a Holy Ghost annoyance. There's a fleshly annoyance. It's selfish. But there is a righteous indignation. We're going to talk more about this. It's good. He, he became annoyed. The anointing. The, the, he became annoyed in his righteous spirit. I'm telling you, I'm prophesying, you need to get annoyed. Annoyed enough to speak the word of God. Annoyed enough to put your foot down and say, no more. I'm not laying and taking this anymore. I'm not doing it. You need to get annoyed. You need to, like one person said, you need to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. You need to become annoyed at your status to where you begin to do something and speak the word of God. There's a Holy Spirit annoying annoyance. <laughs> That's such a word. Hallelujah. And so he was greatly annoyed because she kept saying this day after day and turned and said to the spirit, he didn't say it to the girl, don't get annoyed at people. That's fleshy. Get annoyed at the spirits using people. And he said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and it came out at that very moment. There are voices being spoken to us that are fearful thoughts, fearful, angry, fearful, frustrated, all of that. You need to say in Jesus' name, shut up. And you don't have to say that over and over again. He didn't have to keep saying that over and over again. And when he said it, you even say, do I even say this, Lord? Some of you have family members that are so annoying to you, you don't have to say it in their presence. You need to go in your prayer closet, your word closet, your talking to closet, and say, I command the demons talking through so-and-so, shut up in Jesus' name. Be quiet. You'll be amazed at how they'll no longer have the power to speak annoying things to you. Listen, be mindful of the Holy Spirit. Be mindful of the Holy Ghost. He's trying to show you. So notice he didn't pray about the Spirit. He didn't go to, the, to God and say, Oh, God, oh, Father, this woman is annoying me. Oh, this person's just really wearing me out. I'm so tired of hearing her mouth. That She calls me every day and wears me out. I just, feel, I just don't have time for all this. 
Lord, this woman keeps following us and saying all this stuff, and it's really getting old, and I'm really getting aggravated. And Father, would you just please talk to her, God? I just please pray, please come down, oh Father, and stop this woman. He didn't pray about it. He didn't pray about it. I'm talking to somebody right now. You've been talking about people that are annoying you. You've even prayed about it. Oh, God, come, come, make them stop. Oh, God, please. Oh, God, this. Oh, God, that. No, no. Paul didn't talk about it. He didn't pray about it. He turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out at that very moment. He was talking to it, not about it. There's some, th there's some demons you need to shut their mouth that are working through people. And you specifically, don't do it in front of them. That, that's not needed. Go to a private place, and if you've got Sally and Billy and Bobby, let's say you've got three people that are just harassing you, they just run their mouth, they're just, yeah, la, 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 negative, negative, negative. You just need to go to your prayer closet and say, I command every one of you demons that are using Billy Bob's and Sally and, and Billy May or whatever's mouth, I command you that are using these three call their, to stop. I silence your mouth. I bind your mouth in Jesus' name. You have authority to use the name of Jesus. And when you speak in the name of Jesus, it's as if Jesus himself said it. Amen. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. <laughs> he took away their money making. All right. A lot of things are being said in our government right now because they're being paid money. A lot of people are doing crazy things. General Milley. Was, is a, is, has committed high treason and our current leadership's okay with that because they have lying demons, lying demons, all right? Uh, so but we say in Jesus' name, we silence your mouth and we command truth to be exposed. We command truth to come out. We silence the mouth of lying spirits and we command truth to come out. We speak confusion into the enemy's camp right now. We declare confusion just like in the Old Testament, when they begin to praise God, it said they, they begin to, to destroy themselves. And that's what's happening in Satan's Marxist socialist camp. They are they're run, they're running into each other. They're, confused. They're, they're attacking each other. There's confusion in the devil's camp in the name of Jesus. I declare confusion in the devil's camp. They're going to begin to turn on each other in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now... So they threw these guys into jail, and uh, they said, these men are throwing our city into confusion, being Jews, and are proclaiming customs, which it's not lawful for us to accept or to observe, being Romans. They threw them into jail saying, these Jews are creating problems. They're messing with our customs. Did you hear that? They got thrown into jail because they would not go with the customs, the devilish, demonic customs. Are you all ready? We've got to stand our ground. We've got to speak into the spirit realm. And we've got to be willing to stand up for what's right. They got thrown in jail um, because they weren't going with the customs, the perverted customs of that culture. And I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is using this story in Acts chapter 16 to prophesy to you this is the era we're in right now. We've got to silence the voice of spirits, demon spirits, and we've got to be willing to stand up regardless of the cost. Now, they were thrown in jail. And uh, it said, The crowds rose up, rose up together against them, and the chief magistrates tore their robes off them and proceeded to order them to be beaten with rods. They cast out a demon. They're going to get a beating at the state house, at the courthouse. They cast out a demon, and now they're going to be beaten with rods because of their authority. And so they commanded them and struck them with many blows. They threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. And so uh, having received such a command, he threw them into the inner prison. That's not fair. And fastened their feet in the stocks. Now their backs are bleeding. They've been beaten with rods. They cast a demon out of a girl. It ruined the profits uh, that these people made. It's all about the money, okay? Okay. And have it, they got thrown in the jail. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and then singing hymns of praise to God. They're probably praying in the Spirit. I'd say they're praying in tongues because they're trying to get direction. They're not praying for God to get them out. They're praying to hear what they're supposed to do. They're praying to get direction from the Lord. They don't plan on staying in there. 
They're praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit, and singing hymns. Now, I wonder if we were thrown into prison for doing a good thing, if we were politically persecuted for doing a good thing, would we be praying and singing hymns or would we be griping and complaining and, and becoming bitter? And if we do that, we're going to stay in that prison. But they prayed, getting direction, and the direction was, begin to praise me. And they began to sing hymns right in the inner prison. And the prisoners were listening to them. So they're not only singing to God, they're singing to the prisoners. Did you hear me? They prayed to God. They began to sing hymns. And it said the prisoners heard them. Are the prisoners hearing our praise? See, when we're praising God, not only are we talking to God, but we're also talking to those around us. And the prisoners heard them. So again, in their praying, they're still talking to it. And suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. I want to challenge us. There's a time to pray, but now there's a time to praise. There's a time to put on praise and sing hymns and worship God. I encourage you, put on some worship music. Sing, pray in tongues. Sing, worship the Lord. Take authority over the devil. Sing and watch the earthquake happen in your circumstances and watch the prisoners around you get set free and get set loose. The worst thing the devil can do is throw you into an inner prison. He's, the worst thing Satan can do is throw you, who knows how to speak the word of God, knows how to praise and pr praise God. The worst thing the devil can do is put you right in the middle of the prisoners. Because when you get put in the middle of the prisoners, wherever that is, whether it's your workplace or your family that's bound by religion and bound by, by sex, perversion, drugs, and alcohol, when you land in the middle of someone's prison, it's a setup that God is going to use you to set the prisoners free and not only set the prisoners free, but it said that the doors were broken at the foundational level. Those prison doors wouldn't work anymore. That prison was broken. Not only were prisoners set free, but the prison was permanently broken. The foundations of the prison were destroyed. I'm prophesying to you right now as you continue to speak the word, speak in the authority of Jesus' name, as you continue to praise God, and you stay on the side of victory, declaring the word of God, God is putting you in the middle of prisons and prisoners so that captives can be permanently set free. Right now, you're being set up by a godless socialist government to jump in the middle of a prison and set captives free. God has placed you in the middle of a prisoner in prisons to set captives free. Don't pray about it. Talk to it. And praise God. Man, that's good news. Say this out loud. I am a prison breaker. I set prisoners free. And I permanently break their prisons. In the middle of the prisoners. I don't talk about it. I talk to it. And when I praise God. The prisoners hearing my praise are experiencing an earthquake of deliverance and their bondages are being permanently broken in Jesus name that is awesome that is awesome so when the so it says that the foundations of the prison were shaken the foundations of the prison house was shaken the foundations Ah, man, we're not just trying to put a band-aid on an addiction. We are destroying bondages at the root. The good news, the gospel has destroyed your bondages at the root. You're not just coping. It's broken. It's being broken. Glory to God. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. Really? The doors were opened. So it shows took that prison that the doors were, all of them were open and their chains unfastened. How does an earthquake unfasten chains? How does an earthquake unfasten chains? There's some angelic activity here. I'm telling you, there are people around you as you speak the word of God, as you praise God, as you sing to God, as you speak the word, as you pray in tongues, prisoners are being set free. Their, their chains are being unfastened. 
And so when the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors opened, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. He just assumed the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Do not harm yourself, for we're all here. Now, what does that mean? These prisoners could have run. They could have, they could have had a mass insurrection. They could, have had a, they could have run, but they didn't. You know when someone is free, when they no longer run from the place of bondage they were in. They're not afraid of it. You know someone's free when they don't have to break the law to be free. They knew it was against the law. You know someone's free when they're not looking for an escape. They're not looking for an excuse. They're ready to stay right there. They're free to be obedient to the word of God, to the law. Man, that's a miracle. It's a miracle. These guys weren't just free from the prison. They were free from the bondage. They were free from the prisoner identity. They no longer were prisoners looking for a way out. They were free men willing to do their time. They were free. The, 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 there's, see, look, you can get a man out of prison, but that doesn't mean you can get the prison out of the man. Real freedom is when you not only are able to get the man out of prison, but you're able to get the prison out of the man. They were so free that even though the doors were opened and their chains were loosed, they all were right there. There was a mass revival because two men got illegally thrown into a prison. It destroyed the prison and set the prisoners free, not from their external bondage, but from their internal bondage. You are a prison breaker. Say it again. I am anointed to break prisons. I am anointed to set captives free. And some of those prisoners are your family and your work associates. And you are carrying the anointing. God has put you there to set captives free. Just being who you are. And when the door opens to speak a word, speak it. When it doesn't, just be who you are. Keep, keep your praise on. Keep your joy. Keep your praise on. Walk in the anointing. You are weighty. You are, you are on assignment. And you're not going to keep talking to God about it. They didn't talk to God. They prayed and got direction. God told them what songs to sing. When they began to sing the songs, the prisoners heard them. So as they're singing to God, they're singing to the prisoners. And the prisons broke. I'm telling you, we are prison destroyers. We're free. Say it out loud. I am free. Not only am I free from the bondages of sin. Not only am I out of sin, but sin is out of me. Not only am I out of prison, but prison is out of me. Amen. Man, that's powerful. That's what it means to talk to it. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank God we're free. And if you're dealing with addictions and things of that nature, I want you to know that's not who you really are. We had that conversation last night at church. It was awesome. God is revealing to you who you really are. And what happens when you begin to get a revelation of who you really are, some of those addictions and habits that you've struggled with, it's like you continue doing it, but it's like, this is not me anymore. This is just not who I am. See, you're not a human doing, you're a human being, and you're a new creature in Christ. You're the righteousness of God. You're a son of God, a daughter of God. You're victorious. You're anointed. You're successful. You're healthy. Love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Make sure you share this. Get this word out. There's somebody bound in addictions that needs to hear this jump start. Please help us get this word out. Somebody needs to see it. Thank God for our freedom. We are, free. we are freedom. We, we deliver people. We set people free. Amen. Love you guys. Have a blessed rest of the day. Talk to it, not about it.